Obaidala was about a 19-year-old Afghan farmer at the time that he was captured by U.S. forces in Afghanistan. He was operating a pots and pans store, uh, very, very humble. He lived with his mother and his uncle. And he had just gotten married and had a child. He was picked up in the fog of war at a time when the U.S. was dropping leaflets from the sky that promised people wealth beyond their wildest dreams, bounties for $25,000 if they fingered anyone who was Al-Qaeda or the Taliban. People were being pointed out left and right even though they had nothing to do with Al-Qaeda or the Taliban. The Lydala was abused by the U.S. government immediately upon capture. The Lydala was beaten with a rifle at one point. Uh, he had a knife held to his throat and forced to give a confession. He was denied food and water. Back in uh, the early years of Guantanamo Bay, when men were basically treated like dogs, they were kept in kennels. The conditions in Guantanamo do not exist here in the United States. The men at Guantanamo were tortured and interrogated for hours upon hours, for days, for weeks, for months. I have said repeatedly that I intend to close Guantanamo and I will follow through on that. Uh, I've said repeatedly that America doesn't torture and I'm going to make sure that we don't torture. President Obama made it pretty clear that he was not going to do much to shut down Guantanamo. He shut down the one-person office that was in charge of trying to repatriate these people, return them to their home country, and that really got the hunger strike started. Now to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, where a hunger strike amongst detainees at the facility continues to spread. Conditions have been getting worse. After the detainees went on hunger strike, the military cracked down on them. There are numbers of the prisoners who are being force-fed, and by force-fed, it's an extremely brutal process. Tubes are stuck down the detainees' noses. We've been hearing reports that they're using tubes that are too large. Which, number one, is painful, humiliating, degrading, uh, and is against their will. And the military, of course, it's such an irony that they're doing this because these are people that they have no intention of trying. They're detaining them indefinitely, but they're keeping them alive under this very brutal process that's been acknowledged to not be respecting human rights. He was very concerned that no one in the world knew what was happening. He was concerned that the people at Guantanamo had been forgotten. And when I was leaving, he asked to write down the one thing that he wanted to have come out of our visit. Thank you. Thank you and the attorneys for your efforts on me and the detainees. Please tell the world of this unfairness. Latif, another man at Guantanamo, died here, even with a clearance. We continue to hold people at this space, most of whom have never been charged, will never be charged, and more than half of whom have been cleared for release. We believe he is an innocent man. People were picked up, innocent people, and there are many, many hundreds of those. And some of those still exist in the black hole that we call Guantanamo. Obaida talks about it being very difficult to speak with his family because he can't tell them especially his daughter, when he's coming home. And she cries every night for her father, a father she's never met, but who she knows is somewhere on the shores of some island being held for reasons she has no idea. And the American people must know that they've been sold a lie. Guantanamo Bay has hurt our image around the world, and it's time to do what's right for America. We need to send people like Levitala home. This shouldn't be us. This should not be us. This shouldn't be us. This should not be us.